Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. As most of you know, I also write the Ask Dave column in QST. And what I did for the April edition of this, which is in the QST that is out right now, is I asked people at a Hempfest I was attending at Quartzite uh, out in the Arizona desert where everybody was dry camping and boondocking and so on. I asked various people there to submit some questions. One of the questions that was submitted was by Jerry Gerritsen, Boise, Idaho. And his question was, what sort of antennas are useful in a mobile home park? Now, in many mobile home parks, there are many rules about putting up antennas. Some of the older parks don't have any such rules, but there are a couple of different approaches that you can use. Depending on how far the homes themselves are spread apart, you could run a wire to a tree and use a remote antenna tuner to tune that up on any band, although it gets a little hard on 80 if the wire is not long enough. You could also put up a vertical antenna, one of the types that doesn't need radials, unless you've got a lot of room in a backyard. But you could put up something, there are a variety of those made, uh, call DX Engineering, tell them your situation, they can suggest several things to you. Another antenna that most people don't even know is an antenna, is a magnetic loop. Now, a good mag loop and a good multiband vertical are going to cost you about the same, and they're going to perform about the same. The thing about the multiband vertical is that it will work on any of those bands without doing anything to the antenna. That's not true with a mag loop where you have to retune it every time you change frequency. For example, I do a whisper. I've got a cute little transmitter right here called the Whisper Transmitter. It's by Zactec, which is a Scandinavian firm. This operates on the NFED half-wave dipole that I have. It's the one from the League, lengthened to also work on 80 meters. So that antenna will operate on any of those bands without any band changing. So I have the Whisper go 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters in order, and then it cycles back around and does that. When I go to whispernet.org, I can see who in the world is hearing my signal, because you can do two things with Whisper. You can transmit and be a beacon, or you can receive all these signals, send them in over the internet to whispernet.org. There are ways of doing all of this. It's built into the Whisper software to receive and do that. Mostly people do one or the other. Okay, either transmit, I transmit, or be a, a reception type beacon. There are quite a few people across the United States and in Europe and in Australia who do this and pick up quite a number in Canada and in the Hawaiian Islands. There are some in South America. So you see something stretch out there and do something very good with those. So if you have a magnetic loop antenna, that won't work because you have to retune every time you go to a different band. Some mag loop antennas will give you remote tuning. One thing to note about mag loops is most of them are limited in the amount of power they can take to 25 to maybe 30 watts, depending on how they're built. The antennas that will do 100 watts are much bigger. The loop is the same size, about three feet, but the capacitor for that thing is huge. And that is so that it can withstand the high voltage across the plates of the capacitor when uh, you're trying to run 100 watts. Now, there are 100 watt mag loops out there. Now, the perfect vertical antenna would have been made by high gain, and it was the high gain AV640. You could do the 680 if you wanted to, although it only covers a small amount of 80. But the 640 will cover all of 40 and on up to about 6 meters. That was the perfect antenna for this. It does not require any radials, so it does have some counterpoise pieces sticking out of the bottom. That's fine. But you can mount it to a chimney, something like that. And now that MFJ, who makes them, has stopped making them, and the stocks have all run out everywhere, you can't get that antenna anymore. So it's just, it's very sad. MFJ just quit business. 
and they make so much stuff that so many hams depend on and now they're gone. So other manufacturers will slowly uh, build up to that. But there are a few types of antennas that are out there. You can take a look at, I called DX Engineering today to find out what might work in place of a vertical. There's a Comet antenna that is 23 feet high that works supposedly without radials. It gets mixed reviews. People either love it or hate it. There's also a Moonraker that is just a vertical piece of aluminum pipe. So that means you have to have a tuner at the bottom of it in order to tune it for whatever band you're on. It's like any automatic tuner. You transmit, it senses the transmit frequency. If it already has it in memory, bam, it just goes right there. If it doesn't, it'll go through a tuning process and then your SWR will be nice and low. We recently did a video uh, looks at how you can tune a long wire uh, using a remote antenna tuner. And it works very well. The key thing to remember is to make sure that the tuner in your radio is turned completely off and bypassed. Otherwise, the two tuners fight each other. Others that he mentioned, Diamond makes a similar antenna, similar to the comment. Alpha is coming out with some like that. The problem with the mag loop antenna, you've got to remember, is it really likes to be 10 feet above the ground. Now, I know somebody who mounted their MFJ mag loop antenna on a pole, put it in the backyard, hung a bird feeder below it, and curled fake leaves and stuff around it. Tells everybody it's just his bird feeder in the backyard, which nobody would object to. Actually, he had a very competent uh, antenna out there. So my recommendation, if you live in a mobile home park where you don't have much room, would be a vertical. It would be the bottom of the vertical would be at roof level. You can put the ones in that need radials, although the best would be to do one that doesn't need radials. And now that MFJ is out of the business, actually, and high gain too, since that was an MFJ company, you may have a little trouble finding something like that. But I named a couple of things that DX Engineering named for me. Jerry, thank you very much for your question. It was good to meet you at QuartzFest. Maybe we'll see you there next January. Until we next meet, 73.